Yeah, Aaron, I'll start you off on an easy one. How are the quarterbacks looking so far <laughs> in spring? Um, good. Um, we, you know, we have four guys taking reps right now, which um, isn't easy. But I feel like, uh, you know, we're getting into this, into the deep into spring ball now, where they're starting to sort of uh, accumulate enough reps that we're starting to get a good idea of who who each one of these guys are. And um, but we're still very much in the process of evaluating them. When it comes to evaluating guys in the spring versus say training camp coming up in August, are there differences or is it kind of the same process, just the early part of that process? Um, spring and training camp are fairly similar. Um, I would say maybe the only difference being in spring, you're really giving reps to a lot of, a lot of players at other positions as well, where you're kind of trying to find out who some of your younger guys are and develop them, bring them along. Um, where in training camp, you, you know, after that probably first week of training camp, you're, you're more zeroing in on the guys that are going to play for you. And so that, that would probably be, I, I think the execution level in, in fall camp usually goes up a little bit. You know, it's just as you zero in more on who's going to play and those guys get reps of playing together. So that can help the quarterback sometimes. But um, they're very similar. Aaron, on the quarterback uh, competition, uh, sometimes there's a st- you know strategic advantage between for for not naming a starter before the first game. Do you buy into that, or or do you prefer to not have it as as a distraction and just say, hey, this is going to be the guy. We're going to move forward here. Yeah, I think there's value in that for sure. And now, if if one of the guys just clearly, without question, is just so obviously the guy that there's no way the secret's not going to get out, then that's you know that's silly. But when you have a good competition and you know there there's different differences between the guys uh, definitely why would you why would you let your opponent know which one which one it's going to be and be prepared for that guy i mean so i'm not saying that that's my plan but um, if it takes that long to decide then that is a bonus for sure so you're saying you're probably going to be fielding quarterback questions up until deep um, game week, like likely, just you know, it's just po- so it's aware. possible. I mean, it's possible. I'm not. Again, that's not part of my strategy, but it is possible. And if the battle is really, really tight all the way up to to the game, then I do think there's there's something to that. And I know there is because I've coached with defensive coaches that are trying to guess well which quarterback are we going to see, what what style of play is it going to be, and and uh, so. Um, but if one of the guys clearly becomes the guy and, you know, when those things happen, the word gets out, right? So if, if that happens, then it'll happen. But so far, it's been a really tight battle. Coach, I wanted to ask you a little bit of a different question because it's now March Madness. Who were maybe some of the best basketball players either on the coaching staff or some of the players on the team when you guys hoop it up and do some pickup ball? Me, I'm the best basketball player on the staff, and it's not close. Um, so yeah, that's it. And nobody else. Just kidding. Harvey's a good player. Kalani's not a bad basketball player, actually. Uh, I haven't seen everybody play though, but I can still shoot. It's all I awesome. do now. I don't play. I don't play anymore though. I just shoot with my kid in the backyard. It's like Steph Curry out there but, just cooking from, yeah. from three. Yeah, no, I can't. I don't play at all anymore. But uh, yeah, but there are some pretty good basketball players on our coaching staff. Yeah, I think Harvey definitely is the best one. Uh, with on, on the football side of things, with with the quarterback battle, how is uh, Jaron Hall like? You know, coming in, he was fully healthy. How is he? Uh, where have you seen maybe growth in his game now that he's healthy again? He looks better every day. So he's he's you the, the health is everything with him. He is he's had a tough time staying healthy. Uh, but when he's been available to us, he's played well. So that's the whole deal with him. And the first practice or two, I would say he was a little rusty. Uh, he hadn't played football in a full in a, in a year. And the last time he played was you know, we got five practices last spring and that was the last time he actually played. So the first couple of practices of this spring 
he was a little rusty just the, the speed of the game was maybe a little quick for him at first um, but he looked good like physically and so you know when you're as talented as he is just each day he looks a little better a little better and I feel like uh, you know we're today was practice 11 and the last three days uh, he's looked like a veteran player out there and he's doing a good job Hey, Coach, so kind of moving away from March Madness and spring ball, uh, looking ahead to the NFL draft, uh, this is arguably the best draft class BYU has had in about 20 years. What do you think has contributed to that success, and is it something that BYU will be able to continue in the future, or is it like a one-off type of situation? No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how many guys we're going to have every year or even this year, but uh, it's definitely – part of our recruiting strategy is we are trying to recruit players who have NFL ability and who have NFL goals. We, we want a team full of guys that have a goal to play in the NFL. And, and especially in, in the quarterback room, I'm not interested in any quarterbacks that don't at least want to get there. I mean, not everybody will, but that should be their that should be an important goal of theirs if they want to play QB for me. And so we're trying to recruit players at every position that have a chance. And then, uh, you know, if you keep, if you keep uh, getting enough players that have the raw material, then, you know, you're bound to, and you do a good job developing them, then you're bound to have some draft picks at some point. And I think that you're going to see more in the next few years. Um, and it's been it's been a big focus in our recruiting and our development. And what can you say about this year's BYU draft class and what makes them special? Like why you were able to have so many guys um, be able to declare for the NFL draft? Well, it just starts with good coaches that recruited them. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's recruiting. Recruiting is huge. Just identifying guys, you know, at a at a young age that you think are going to develop, you know, and, and it's not always the five-star national recruit that's coming to BYU. And so, but seeing, you know, the guys that were involved in recruiting, you know, Brady Christensen, for example, I mean, he was a, you know, that was, that was a great job by all, everyone involved in recruiting him and then everybody involved in developing him. And he was an undersized guy that was super athletic. And there were some coaches here that saw a vision of what he was going to be in five years and you could say that about Dax Milne and, and Zach and uh, you know a bunch of other guys and you know of course Kyrus was a you know he was a pretty pretty highly recruited guy as well but um, uh, or you know pretty well known right from the start but so I wouldn't maybe he doesn't count in that category of being under recruited but um, it starts with recruiting and then development and then of course each one of those guys just you could you could you could find just individual characteristics in each one of them that they were driven guys that wanted to be great and we gotta we gotta keep it up we gotta keep finding those guys all right let's take a follow-up from jared mitch and jake Aaron, I wanted to ask about um, whether you're seeing differences. You've been working with Jeff Grimes for a long time. I was just wondering if it's if it's a unique new approach that uh, Coach Funk's bringing in with the offensive line, or if it's following a lot of the same things that uh, Coach Grimes did. Um, a little bit of both. He's Coach Funk's a very different different personality, different approach. But uh, one thing I really have enjoyed about him is that he he knew that we have a good offense and a good system already established and he came in and did not change a single word for the offensive lineman I mean all the line calls that those guys make all the play calls all the techniques we use I mean he came in and learned our stuff and I've worked uh, with coaches in the past who struggle with that and want to come in and establish their own system and make the players learn something new, make, you know, make them learn their deal. And he, he came in and learned ours. And so I have a lot of respect for him for that. He's coached so many different places and been in so many different systems that um, 
there, you know, there really hasn't been an issue or a problem that's come up where he hasn't been able to say, well, when I was at this school, we handled that problem like this. And when I was at this other school, we handled it this way. And he's got like three solutions to every problem that have come up so far. He's, he's a very, very good coach. Um, but similar to Grimey, I mean, Grimey, same thing. Grimey was such a veteran guy. He had answers for everything as well. So um, that's, and that was important. I wanted a veteran guy who who's been around the block like Grimey has. And, and so personality-wise, they're different, but experience-wise and, and, and all that is very similar. And then just Daryl, I thought he's just his, I don't know what the word is, but uh, humility to just come in and pick up the ball. He's, he's like, hey, this isn't broke. Let's, let's not change anything. Let's keep rolling. So he's, he's learned our stuff, and I think the players appreciate that. The other thing I wanted to ask just really quick was, what area do you feel like needs the most improvement for this offense to, to be at its best when we get to the games? Well, I don't know if there's a specific area of improvement, but I think there's a lot to prove about players who have left, holes to fill. You know, I think we were a very balanced team last year. We could run it. We could throw it. Um, we were good in, on third downs. We were good in the red zone. You know, we did a lot of good things, but – some good players left and so somebody some some you know it, in the case of the quarterback it's going to have to be a, a, a person in the case of like Dax losing Dax Milne or Matt Bushman or somebody it doesn't always have to just be one guy it could be a couple of guys but we need players to step up and fill fill those shoes man we need someone to play left tackle Brady Christensen's gone you know and and Zach Wilson's gone and Guys have to step up and fill those spots. So it's not necessarily areas of the offense. It's just who are those individuals going to be that that step up. I think I have a lot of confidence in the in our depth, and I think we'll we'll find the right people. But that's the deal. Coach, do, do you uh, now that you're the offensive coordinator? There's one less offensive coach on the staff. Do you have the ability to you know? work with some of the other position groups ever, or is it just solely focused on the quarterback at all times? I'm with the quarterbacks all the time, but we have portions of practice every day where we're working with other position groups. So, um, so yeah, I still get, I still get a good amount of work with the other groups, but at the same time, I have a lot of trust in our staff. So I don't feel like I have to, I don't, I don't necessarily need to, uh, you know, I'm not not looking over anybody's shoulder or anything. We've we've been together now for a while, and we have a good system in place, and everybody knows it. And um, so, but yeah, we every day we have you know periods of practice where I'm working with the tight ends, working with the running backs, working with the receivers. Sometimes combinations of those groups working together, getting certain areas of our passing game or our run game worked out. Um, you know, we spend. A lot of time every day working on blitz, uh, you know, blitz pickup and pass protection things with the O line and the backs and the tight ends, and so there's there's tons of crossover um, amongst those groups and chances to interact with the guys who coach those positions. Aaron, when it comes to Zach, obviously the pre-draft process, he is all over the place, headlines everywhere. I just wanted to ask you, how many conversations have you had with NFL personnel? And just talking more about specifically since the season ended yeah. and this lead through the draft. Too many to count. I mean, it, it it got exhausting for a while. I was there was a the minute there where I was like I was spending so much time on it. It was kind of eating into my job time here. Um, but I'm happy to do it, of course, for him. I'm proud of him. Happy for him. But yeah, a lot of teams. He's. There's a lot of teams that like him. I know that. I don't. I don't know when he's going to go, but I know there's a lot of teams that really like him. And just kind of building off that, obviously you as you being the passing coordinator, you had your hand across all the positions from last year. Have you had conversations about guys like Brady and some of the other players that are in this draft class, Dax, et cetera? Yeah, sometimes. Not not every scout or every, you know. Uh, management person or whoever I talk to, not not all of them ask me about those guys. Some some ask me about all of them. Some of them just ask me about Zach. So that's more mixed. Um, but yeah, I've I've had conversations about all of our offensive players with with uh, various teams, and then 
think I've talked to almost everybody about Zach. Last thing for me, I just wanted to ask you real quick. You guys are going to have that open practice next Friday. Actually have fans out there. Are you excited to have fans back in the stands, just have a little fun out there on the field again? Yes, and I just I want to say right now, I wish our our uh, our depth and our injury situation was a little more suited to actually have a spring game. You know, we two years ago we had one over at Provo High that was really fun. It was you know, it wasn't probably wasn't the best football game in the world, but it was fun. We split up into teams and we played a spring game and we had a good time doing it. It was entertaining. Uh, we wanted to do something like that. I don't think it's going to be possible though. We're just we got O linemen, a couple guys that have had some injuries and we got to be smart about getting to the season healthy so we're probably it's probably going to be more of a practice but you'll still see a good amount of football offense against defense some scrimmaging uh we'll throw the ball around and everybody can everybody can uh you know email me and dm me their opinions of our quarterbacks i'm sure i'll get a whole bunch of those and uh that'll be great